All right. Um, so my name is Michelle Tobias, and I'm going to tell you a little story about a web map I put together about a year ago. Um, this is a web map that automates itself. It builds its own data every day, twice a day, from an online tabular data set. So um, very exciting. How do we advance? With that mouse button. <laughs> um, so a little bit of background. Um, the university that I work for, the University of California, Davis, um, is required by our, our state, state of California, to list potential uh, COVID exposures that happen in work sites. It's a, something that's mandated by our state. Um, and so the way that they do this to meet the requirement and fulfill the law is to produce a table that they post on a website every day. Um, the table lists uh, the building name, where the exposure happened, and the dates. I personally, as a map person, think a map would be a lot more useful for this. So the goal of my web map was to create an interactive web map that um, shows, uh, that uses the campus potential worksite exposure data that's on that website in tabular form, and then to automate it so that it updates twice a day because we don't know when they're going to update the data, so I figure twice a day is probably good enough. So this is the workflow that um, I put together with some of my students. Um, essentially, it runs as, a, um, as an R script, so we wrote the code in R. Uh, it's a programming language. And, um, it runs on GitHub as a GitHub action. So the GitHub action triggers twice a day. Every time it triggers, it runs this R script. And what it's doing when it runs that script is it's starting out with web scraping. It's going to the COVID exposures website, grabbing the table from the site, and then um, extracting, well, extracting the table from the site, and then it, it assembles the data. So it takes that new data set it got, it tacks it onto the old data set, so that we have all the data from yesterday and today. And then we have to clean it. Um, you can check out the code to see all the cleaning that has to happen, but this is a very um, not standardized data set. So we have to do things like clean building names and clean up dates and stuff like that. Um, and then finally, once the data is cleaned and the, the building name dictionary has been applied, then we have to make it spatial. So we join that data set to our campus building data set to make it spatial. We save it as topo.json because the file has gotten so big that topo.json is the only file type that will go on GitHub and not trigger problems. Um, so found that out a couple months ago and uh, devised that solution. And then that topo.json file is piped into a leaflet website in HTML and also a, an extension called leaflet timeline JS that makes the timeline uh, slider that you're going to see in a minute. And so that makes our web map. So the result is we have an interactive web map. You can go play with it online right now. Um, just Google UC Davis COVID exposures and you'll find it. Um, and it updates daily and it's automated so I don't have to run it every morning like I did last August. <laughs> so this is what it looks like in static form. Um, the time slider has a play button at the bottom where you can hit play and it will run through all of the data that we've assembled. Um, and it's. Uh, it's really cool, but it's also really frightening because you kind of see the, the spikes on campus and when people are off campus. Um, the other nice thing is that uh, because it's leaflet, we can configure pop-ups. So um, I kind of simulated this one, thank you, um, because I couldn't do the screen capture. But um, generally, if you click on a building that's highlighted, it will tell you what the workplace name is, so the campus building, uh, and then what the exposure date is. So if you're ever want to dig into the data a little bit more. Um, that's, uh, that's how it works. And honestly, I think this is a really nice way to uh, visualize this particular data set. For me as a geographer, it's a lot more intuitive than looking at building names. Um, I should also mention that one of the reasons why we built this in the first place was I was looking at the list of tabular data going, huh, it looks like there is a cluster of exposures going on at the vet school. Is that really happening? What happened was it was actually just me recognizing those building names and not the other building names because I didn't know the other buildings. There was not actually like a cluster of exposures there. So this helps us understand that data set better and really know like are we having a problem on a particular part of campus or not. So, um, so thank you. I'm, I'm perfect on time. Uh, there's my contact information. I'd love to chat more about this. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs>